Break the bias. The first thought that occurred to me was what bias are we breaking? What is it like for women in Africa and indeed Nigeria? Today, I choose to talk about bias in different forms, from personal to political to deeply ingrained mindsets. Interesting that I personally think that the greatest bias against women may come from other women. And why is that the case? Maybe generations of cultural conditioning? It may seem. According to a Guardian article published in March 2020, an analysis of 75 countries reveals shocking scale of global women's rights backlash, indicating that 9 out of 10 people were found to be biased against women. That is, almost 90% of people are biased against women. So, despite progress in closing the equality gap, 91% of men and 86% of women hold at least one bias against women in relation to politics, economics, education, violence, or reproductive rights. So it seems biases, instead of shrinking, are growing back. We still live in a male-dominated world where people still think men are more superior political leaders, make better business executives, and almost a third of men and women think it's acceptable for a man to beat his wife. There are signs of big progress in more basic areas of empowerment and participation. Things like financial empowerment, as Comfort has said, and other things we've seen. But brick walls with regards to more empowering areas still stand solidly. In breaking the bias, we cannot pick and choose. We can't say these human rights are for women and these ones are not. It's time to break the bias towards hardcore areas of power political power, economic power, reproductive power, whatever kind of power that exists in the world. How do women achieve economic empowerment when society still believes that it's a matter of privilege for a man who fathers a child with her to help her with child care? Society still believes a man's job and financial input is more relevant than a woman's own and so a woman's time should be prioritized towards her children. And it's her main and almost sole responsibility to create a support system if she wants to chase her dreams and raise children. Cooking food for a family is still regarded as a woman's task, and we still hear comments like, feed him or someone else will, really? <laughs> when care and affection is still based on the physical acts of your sacrifice and body, as opposed to real engagement between partners, the bias is still on. Even from childhood, the bias exists from toys and toys for girls are pretty dolls where we are prepped for looking a certain way and conditioned for looking that way for the purpose of pleasing the opposite gender. While boy toys are made to show risk taking, strength, courage and a carefreeness that girls don't have. So you have the guys getting the cars and girls getting dolls. Mm -hmm. A boy can go topless. However, it's scandalizing when a girl goes topless. Again, what's the reason? how the male gender reacts. On the flip side, women are also choosing to exploit the bias. Look good for him, be his baby and extract the cost from him. To my gender, I say, let's stop dumping down sometimes in distasteful ways to get the man or secure the bag as we say. Because when you dump down to get it, you end up fishwifing forever to keep the bag. So which way forward? Break the bias. Develop the female child to realize that she has a human capacity to be economically empowered, create, allow, and systemically enable the girl child and even grown women achieve their full economic capacity in the way that they choose. And now, something that breaks my heart. Nigerian women have been dealt a major blow once again by the House of Reps who have rejected the bill for special seats for women in parliament while also rejecting a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the 1999 constitution to provide for affirmative action for women in political party administration. So this conversation on gender bias is deep, it's long and it's hard. However, I say now is a good time to call for us to break the bias against women by women themselves. Thank you. Hmm. Well done, well done. <laughs> well done. I mean before I'm um, let me just even focus on the reproductive bias because that's one thing I feel like is really annoying. The fact that like Comfort mentioned during her mm -hmm. session, you can only get pregnant by one man. But a guy can actually impregnate multiple women. So why then 
is the woman why then does woman have the responsibility towards ensuring that she doesn't get pregnant? <laughs> that she doesn't get pregnant. Because she will be left to look after the child, so she had better make sure. <laughs> so it is that's that's just generally it. That's just the problem. Because mm. I mean it's a bias. So you have just more female contraceptives mm. against male contraceptives. And you know, over time um, contraceptives have had effects on women's lives. Women's, I know someone that the contraceptive has literally almost costed her a life. And she's still, even at the point now that she's getting into menopause, she's having to actually feel, face the repercussion of those contraceptives. Mm. So what I'm saying is that mm. women actually, th th there's, there's a lot to be done. So why can't we, you know, begin to channel our energy towards ensuring that women in general are, are, are not left with the burden of having to ensure that, you know, um, in terms of reproduction, they're the ones that is responsible for ensuring that they don't get pregnant. Let's be... Both ways. You see, if I'm going to ensure, so what I would want to say is that if you have now said I should ensure that I don't get pregnant, then I determine the number of children that we have. I determine what exactly goes on as to how the reproduction comes across. Mm. But you will not tell me to be the one to determine the I should be the one that has to take responsibility for how I don't get pregnant, and then you choose what happens to me. It's just unfair. That's unfair. And so really, maybe the question is women should begin to stand and say, why am I allowing this? That's it. I think you know, we have put ourselves in this place where we have become enablers. Mm -hmm. Enablers of bad behavior, enablers of everything that is going wrong. Because I dare say that no one can do anything to you unless you permit it. Yes. So we have constantly permitted this, again, I call it bad behavior. And I mean, why? W everyone will take an advantage of someone who allows them That's to it. just yes. be. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of, you, you know, what, what we've been saying, and I'm thinking, yes, a, a woman, you, you, you think, for instance, if your parents are ill, everybody expects that it's the daughter mm -hmm. who is going to look after, after. the parents. Nobody is thinking, oh, this man had five sons and one daughter. Let these five sons, they're just automatically going to say that exactly. it's the woman. I'm thinking of a situation where my husband looks after the kids and everyone is thinking oh, he's such a good man such a good he man looks after you're the so kids. lucky i do this every day and i'm not getting any medals no one is complimenting me no one is saying you're doing a good job and yet i'm expected to go to work and bring home part of the bacon because now we all know that i mean it's difficult to have a single income family so i'm i'm putting in my share and then at work i'm expected to work like someone who doesn't have kids mm -hmm. and I'm, at home i'm expected to behave like someone who, who doesn't, doesn't have, have a job. job exactly and this is this woman that we're saying is weak cannot how? lead cannot do this really? how cannot participate and in yet, politics. even like i was saying even the serpent in the bible recognized <laughs> the, the power <laughs> and the influence that the woman has right, exactly and yet, we have all this Imagine. So in, in breaking the bias for me, I think we should now turn on ourselves. And I like the way anytime you ended it and you said, so women, you know, it's our responsibility. Mm. So in this case, for me, breaking the bias is the prejudices that women have against themselves. Yes. All that we have said, the people who become custodians of them are women. Mm -hmm. When you come to the bad cultural practices, if you look at it down the line, who are the custodians mm. and who are the implementers of those cultural practices that women. harm women. Yeah. Who are those that women. make excuses for the bad behavior that is going on? It's still us women. Yes. And I think more women, I think more women call themselves prostitutes than actual actually men do. True. It's literally more at, or at par. Mm -hmm. Where the ones, I mean, for example, there was this, there's this young pretty lady that came out um, recently to run for House of Preps. You needed to hear the disparaging remarks that women are making about her. Mm. Ah, that one, is she going there for a uh, beauty contest? Uh, oh, so she's oh, right. that one. I just want to go and finish her. I mean, that those were this lady has come out that she's beautiful and has a night. Is that her fault? Yes, but instead of uh, ah, that was this young pretty girl has gone. I hope she, she has sense. Let's even engage her, let's see, and she whatever. It was women who were bringing out the you know the sexual part of it. Ah, they're going to go and finish her. Out. So, the breaking the bar or break the bias for me here. Yeah. Is the bias that we have against each other, mm -hmm. um, each other. The places where we reinforce the bad behavior, the places where we sit down and we gossip instead of correcting. Um, and I'll, I'll just calm down and. and <laughs> <laughs> I understand me. I understand the comment. <laughs> oh, honestly, I think that as women, we have a lot to do with our mindset. 
we have a lot we need we need to get to a place where we actually stop looking at each other as competition. Mm. Exactly. We need to start looking at the place where we can actually be collaborative. Absolutely. And we need to also accept that, you know what, so this woman may be better than me. And what is it that she needs from me? It's because men actually see competition, but they play it to their advantage. Exactly. I think it's time for women to start applying the logical, strategic side of their brain, which exists in how they relate with women and with men. Honestly, that's the only way that truly we can say we're breaking this bias and we're not standing in our own way. We're literally like obstacles to ourselves. So, exactly. And it's important that for, if we're going to make any any tangible strides, any particular thing, if we're going to, like if we're going to make any progress at all. Because it was shocking when it was found that Hillary Clinton literally didn't win on the, I mean, women actually were, some of the people that were against yeah, her. I did not her vote winning. for her. And so you think, when you think of those, those things, and then when women see other women that look good, that are actually really put together, there's that anger. I'm sorry if I look good and you're angry. Accept yourself or go and work on yourself. It's not anyone's well, ask fault. Ask me for tips. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm but the truth is, yes. and then when I look good, you may be better in something else. Mm -hmm. So it's not a win-win. And you know, at the end of the day, we, think, we still keep thinking about it. And you look at it, it comes down to the fact that it's men. They well, are look good. Some of it. Is, is, is men. I'm making the fact that okay, so you look good, and men are going to appreciate you. We're and still they fighting, appreciate and we're not going. They're not going to appreciate me. And so men have made, put it in our heads that oh, I'm 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 the, I'm the bag, I'm the tool, I'm the I'm price, I'm the price. I'm the price. <laughs> and so exactly. you and, and they we're competing for their affection, exactly. for, their exactly. for their approval, exactly. for their affirmation. Mm -hmm. And so they do that divide and rule. And I'm like, really? The, uh, there was a particular movie I watched recently. But, and it wasn't like, it was when I was saying the story, someone said, is it Nollywood? I said, no, it wasn't Nollywood. It was one of these other countries. And this man had married to the first wife for 19 years. He had a second family. And he had married her for nine years in a different city. So he would, he would shuttle weekends. So Thursday, he would go to the other woman, the, nine, the one that married mm -hmm. And then one day, they, met they found other. out. So the first wife They've was been typical woman. She was heartbroken. She was crying. The other woman said, why are you crying? We both been no! Played. We're both we played. Played. victims. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to collaborate and we're going to do with him together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Those women, they dealt with that man. He got to the point where he actually owned up, apologized to them. They went and said, you know what? And they picked up their lives and they said, they said we're going to, they left, they both left him moved on he could not Believe find it. himself exactly. back so women don't realize the power that they hold emotionally and physically over the minds and the lives of men if they realize the tool in their hands they, they won't allow really themselves easy. to be toyed left right and center men are afraid of women and if I we give them you. opportunities these women have a hold so use it well use it use it strategically use it to you know to create a world where you can actually achieve your goals exactly as opposed to fighting each other Yes, I think when we realize that, I mean, just the popular saying of there's strength in unity. Mm -hmm. There's strength in aligning with what is right. Mm -hmm. And we find out that just like the colonial masters did when they wanted to merge and or when they wanted to conquer and enslave Africa, they use that rule of divide yeah. and conquer. And as long as we allow this pettiness, because women, we can be petty. As long as we allow these petty issues to create a wedge between us and divide us, then we'll find out that there's really little that we can accomplish. Mm -hmm. So what I hear everyone say is that we need to so, just so which, unify. So which one of you is running, which one of you is running, um, for political office. I'm not running, but I can let's, support, let's, I can push I'm somebody. Running yet, but I'm, I'm not running support. yet. Let's let's say okay, yet. yet. Yes. Yet. And I don't I don't think that we necessarily all have to run. I think that, like we said earlier, in your own silo, in your own little space, take ownership, take leadership. And when we know that it's a holistic thing, you're winning where you are, you're winning where you are, we're exactly. all winning in our little spheres, then we will all win together. All win together. That's the truth. Don't worry, if you're running, I can be part of your communication campaign team. I'm here to support <laughs> any woman who wants to do it. Trust me, I mean, I'm there for you. <laughs> and who knows, maybe I might run one day soon. Who knows? No. And we'll be there to cheer you on. Thank exactly. you, people. <laughs> okay. Imagine a gender equal world. A world free of bias, stereotypes, and discrimination. A world that is diverse, equitable, and inclusive. A world where difference is valued and celebrated. Together, we can forge women's equality. Collectively, we can all break the bias. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platform 
on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV, hashtag had the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Join us next week, same time, on the station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. Bye. Break Bye. the bias. <laughs> Break the bias. <laughs>